Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge: interactive drawing with Sketch RNN. Now, maybe you're watching this and thinking to yourself, "Huh? What's Sketch RNN?" Then you're in the right place because I will explain to you a bit about what Sketch RNN is and、uh, provide you with links in the description to a lot of background material if you want to do a deeper dive into the machine learning model that is Sketch RNN. But what I'm going to build in this video that you're watching is a my own version of this exact project. So this is a project on the Magenta website. Magenta is a、uh, project from Google that is around、uh, creativity and AI. There's a lot of music examples、um, with the Magenta project, and what you're seeing here is. Uh, the AI, so to speak. I mean, it's really a machine learning model making predictions,、um, drawing a cat. And I can hit clear here, and I can begin drawing the cat. Like I could just stop there, and it's going to try to fill in the rest of the cat for me. Let's see if I try to draw one like this with like a, like a sort of body and like a tail. We can sort of see what happens. So this is the I've used SketchRNN before because I can generate a drawing. From nothing with SketchRNN, but what I want to do in this video is create something where the person using the computer draws with the mouse. But you could imagine all sorts of interface interaction ideas that you could do, and then has the machine learning model takes over and finishes the drawing. And you can see there are quite a few other models. The、uh, SketchRNN,、uh, the SketchRNN model isn't one model; it's actually a collection of many models based on these categories because. The data that was used to train the machine learning model is from a project called QuickDraw. So QuickDraw is a game that you can play, also from Google, where、uh, the, the the website prompts you to draw something, and then it tries to like guess to see if like you're drawing the correct thing. And you, people playing that game, Google collected all of those drawings. So I think there's a lot of interesting questions around the data set itself.、Um, but it is an open source data set. It has 50 million drawings. I think there are 384 categories. I'm not 100 percent sure about that,、um, and so that's the data set that it was trained on. The kind of machine learning model architecture is something called a recurrent neural network. This is a wonderful article that I read that really taught me a lot about how recurrent neural networks work. It's quite technical, but uh, also uh, pretty friendly and uses some、um, nice examples to describe how they're working. But you can also read the original paper by David Ha and Douglas Eck,、uh, researchers at Google Brain, that describe. Um, the Sketch RNN model, how it was trained, and all of the details、um, behind it, including you know the real lower level machine learning、uh, math details. You can also read this excellent blog post、um, on the Magenta blog called "Draw Together with a Neural Network," which、uh, mentions other collaborators and、um, uh, gives you、uh, more details also about how Sketch RNN works. Guess what, though. I'm going to start coding now because one of the projects that I work on, which is an open source library for machine learning called ML5.js, is built on top of TensorFlow.js, which is Google's open source JavaScript、uh, version of TensorFlow machine learning <laughs> open source library. And、uh, ML5 also includes the Sketch RNN model as part of it. So if I go here to reference, I can find the Sketch RNN page and Read a bit more about Sketch RNN and get some starter code. First thing that I need to do if I'm going to use the ML5 library is make sure to import it into my P5 Sketch. So on the getting starting page,、um, there's actually a P5 web editor template I could click on, but I'm actually just going to copy this reference. And guess what? New version of ML5 out today, 0.4.0. Lots more to say about that in other videos to come. But I'm going to go back to my sketch in the web editor. I'm going to click over to find index.html, and I'm going to add it as one of the libraries. Right up here in index.html. Click save. Go back to sketch.js, and I'm ready to code. I'm going to add the preload function、um, in order to load the sketch RNN model. So I'll make a variable. I'll call it sketch RNN. I'll say sketch RNN equals, and I'll go back to the reference ML5 sketch RNN model and callback. The model is a string. That indicates what category. What is the thing that I want to draw? And I can actually find a list of all of them here. But I'm going to start with just cat, and I don't need a callback because I'm loading the model in preload. So I can assume that once I get to setup, the model is loaded. And let me run it. No errors. Good sign. Model is loaded. Sketch RNN initialized. Using Sketch RNN is actually as easy as just. Calling a single function, the generate function. I could say in setup,、uh, sketch RNN dot generate, 
And then all I need to do is give it a callback. And the callback I'm going to say got path stroke. I'm not sure what to call this. I'm going to call it stroke path. Got stroke path. And I'm going to write this function function got stroke path that receives two arguments: an error in case something went wrong, and then an actual stroke path object. Or I should maybe call this results. I don't know, but I'm going to call it stroke path. And I'm just going to say console.log stroke path. Let's run this and see if anything comes out in the console. I love it when things work. It's like so rare in coding. This is now the foundation upon which everything else that I do in this example will be built. So let me unpack this for you for a second. A recurrent neural network is a kind of machine learning model that deals with sequential data. That could be text, like a sequence of characters, R A I N B O W. It could be text, like a sequence of words, Chu, followed by Chu. It could be music, maybe a sequence is a melody. <laughs> of notes and rhythms, a sequence. Each one of these units in a sequence you can think of as the state. So in this case, the state is very simple. It's a single character. Here it's maybe with words, it's a little more complex. Certainly musical notes, the state might have which note is it, what's the amount of time, the duration of that note. Drawing, a drawing can also be thought of as a sequence. Draw, 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 draw. This is a sequence of vector paths or stroke paths, as I'm calling them, strokes. They're strokes of a pen. And you'll notice back here in the code, there's a dx, a dy, and a pen, a pen status. So all of the state, each element of the sequence involves a vector path, a change in x, a change in y, and whether the pen was down or up. Is the pen down? Is the pen up? And there's actually a third state, which is, is the drawing completed, which is end. So if I, all I need to do is figure out a way to say like, okay, you gave me this state. Now I'm going to take that data and visualize it. Interestingly enough, I'm going to visualize it in a very literal form by drawing the path according to that vector in a canvas. But maybe that state could be translated into music or words or some other kind of media. How could you create an audio version of Sketch RNN? That would be something to think about. There is a tricky thing going on here, which is when do I choose to draw? Because if you've used P5 before, you know that there's this function draw that you're asked to write, which is always looping. That's the animation loop. And generally, that's where you want to do your drawing. But the stroke, the data for the stroke has come back in this callback. So I could get rid of the draw loop and do some of my own timing stuff and draw in here. But I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable called current stroke. Um, and I'm going to, whenever I get a new stroke, I'm going to say current stroke equals stroke path. Just going to set, I'm going to get the data coming in and set it to a global variable. Then in draw, I'm going to ask if current stroke exists. And I'm actually going to say if it's, yeah, I'm going to say if current stroke, if it exists, then I want to draw a line from some value x, y <laughs> to x plus current stroke dot dx y plus current stroke dot dy. So in other words, I need some new data here. I need to have this idea of where is the current pen. And this is up to me. This is not part of the model. The model is just telling me relative directions to go. So I'm going to create my own variable called x and y. In setup, let me initialize it to just the center of the canvas. Let me just uh, fill in the background uh, with a white background and then draw this uh, line, let's say a stroke zero, uh, stroke weight four, so it's a little bit thicker. And let's run this now. There it is, my cat. Meow. My drawing, of course, has stopped because I only asked the generate function just gives me what is essentially the next path, the next vector. So once I have that, I need to ask for another one. So there's a bunch of different ways I could implement this. But for me, the logic is such that setup is going to ask for the first one. Then I'm going to receive it in the callback, draw it. And then right here after I've drawn it, let me ask for the next one. So I can just do exactly this again. 
But what I want to also do, if I'm asking for the next one, let me set current stroke to nothing again. Let me just sort of clear that variable. So the draw, draw might continue to loop, but it won't continue to draw that same stroke over and over again until a new one comes in and fills into that variable. So I think now, if I run this, we're going to see. Ah, OK. So <laughs> close. Ah, look at this cat. Meow, 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 meow. I drew the vector path, but I didn't move the pen to the next spot. So I need to say x plus equals uh, current stroke dx. And the same thing, y plus equals current stroke dy. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's the cat. Oh, OK, so I can't erase the background and draw. And there we go. Now, this doesn't look exactly right, right? The thing that's missing here is I haven't dealt with the pen. I really should only be drawing the line. I always want to move the x and y, but only if current stroke dot pen is down, do I want to actually draw that line? Let's try this now. Something's off. I know what the problem is here, and uh, I'm having a bit of a sense of deja vu because I went through this in the Snowflake video. But um, if this sequence where every single state has a dx, dy, and a pen state, the pen state is actually describing what you should be doing for the next stroke. It's a little bit weird, but it's off by one. I suppose that's because the drawing always starts with the pen down. And also, there's a pen state of end. So when you get a dx dy, you do that, and then the next thing is end. So this value that comes back in the pen is actually for the next, the next state. So I, I need to think about this in a more clever way. So I'm going to have a separate variable that keeps track of next pen, and it's going to start with down. Then what I'm going to say is if next pen is down, which it will be, then draw the line, and then next pen equals current stroke dot pen. So I'll save it for the next time around, and then always pick it up again. And I'll obviously stop if um, next pen is uh, end. So I can say something like if next pen equals end, I could say, you know, no loop and return. This will just kill the P5 sketch. It will stop. It kind of looks like a cat, right? Now I have this cat and it is the correct generated drawing, a duplicate of what I did in the Snowflake uh, Sketch RNN challenge, but here I am ready to add the next component, which is a person <laughs> coming here, drawing their own starter path, and then having Sketch RNN take over. How would I do that? So one of the things that I have to revisit, I need to revisit the state. So any given moment of the drawing is a dx, a dy, and a pen state. So I need to collect a sequence of those from the person who is drawing. One way I can do that is I want to, uh, I'm, the drawing, I'm not going to be too sophisticated about this. I'm going to have the user start the drawing when they click the mouse and stop when they release the mouse. So I basically want two events that are tied to the canvas. So I'm going to store the canvas in a variable. And I'm going to say canvas mouse pressed start drawing and canvas dot mouse, pre uh, mouse released. Um, I'm going to say finish drawing, but it's not finished. A sketch RNN, I'm going to say sketch RNN start. So I no longer want to call generate right here in setup. I'm not going to start generating. I'm going to first collect the data from the user. Um, and function start drawing, presumably right here, is where I'm going to start generating the drawing, right? Sketch RNN start. So I need a, what I'm going to call this is the seed path. It's, it's what I'm seeding the machine learning model with. So seed path is an array. And I'm going to have a, var a, a variable called person drawing, which is false. And as soon as I, as soon as start drawing happen, person drawing will go to true. Because in draw, I'm going to say if person drawing, I want to collect those states. 
So what are the states? The stroke path is an object which has a dx, a dy, and a pen state. Well, the pen is always going to be down. Again, I could do something more sophisticated where I could have an interaction that the, u the person, the user, could actually draw, stop, pick up, do different things, and then have SketchRNN know how to take over. But by definition, the way I'm building this is when the mouse is released, SketchRNN takes over. So the pen is always down. And dx is, I can use built-in variables of P5. It stores the current mouse position minus the previous mouse position. So this is actually really easy to do in P5 because I have these uh, values already. So the difference between the current mouse and the previous mouse, uh, dx, dy, and the pen is down. Then I can say uh, seed path dot push stroke path. And then when the mouse is released, sketch arn and start. Person drawing is false. Let's give this a try. OK, big problem. I don't see what I'm drawing. <laughs> that would be nice. Oh, but it drew a cat as soon as I released the mouse. So I need to add something in draw, which does the following. Hmm. I guess I just want to draw. I want to do exactly what I did here. So let's universally, let's set stroke 0, stroke weight 4. And let's just take this line function, put it here, and I want to draw x, y, x plus, stroke path. And then I want to say uh, the same thing. I want to do this. So again, there might be a way to consolidate this code. And but there it is. So this now, at least I should see what I'm drawing. Whoa. OK, that's weird. Oh, it's drawing everything relative to the mouse, relative to the center. That's not good. <laughs> Aha. So the first point that I'm drawing is actually, uh, ah, OK. So x and y don't get initialized in the center. Of course, of course, of course. x and y get initialized when I start drawing wherever the mouse is. All right, that should fix this problem. Here's my cat. Now continue drawing my cat weird. Wait, I drew the circle. I drew the cat's face already. So it's picking up where I left off, but it seems to be starting the drawing over. Why? <laughs> because I never told the model, the SketchRNN model, about my seed strokes in the first place, right? I still just call sketchRNN.generate that first time. But guess what? The generate function can take as an additional optional argument, an array of states that are fed into the model. And I have those already in seed path. Is that what I called it? So now, drum roll, please. I believe this is the last detail. There's plenty more I want to say and a couple more things I want to do. But this is the last sort of key detail here. That was good, but there's a, I got lucky. So it sort of worked, it sort of didn't work. There is an issue, there is something really important that I need to implement. And actually it's my intention for this to actually become a feature of ML5 and it's gonna handle it for you automatically. But that hasn't been implemented yet in ML5, so in this video I'm gonna try it out. And then maybe in a future video, I'll do a video about adding this as a feature to ML5. Um, and it has to do with the RDP line simplification algorithm, which guess what? If you look at the previous coding challenge, what a coincidence. It is the RDP line simplification algorithm. So why does this matter? Let's go back to this example here. And I'm going to do something. Pay close attention. I'm going to hit clear. I'm going to zoom way in close. And I'm going to draw very, very slowly a lot of squiggly lines like this really, really slowly. And watch what happens when I lift up the mouse. Ready? One, two, three. Do you see how the drawing changed? The, some of, it's very subtle, but some of the points that I was drawing were removed. The, the fidelity of the line was lowered. Um, even though it's capturing, I'm capturing the mouse positions in my sketch at presumably 60 frames per second. I'm capturing a lot of points. So I'm giving the machine learning model, the sketch RNN model, all of these states where the dx and dy values are really, really tiny. 
the model wasn't actually trained with drawings that have a super high fidelity to them with lots and lots of points close together. Um, I, I'm actually not sure whether if that's in the original quick draw data set or whether that was like a processing of the data. But I was in touch with David Ha who explained that the RDP algorithm was used to simplify the drawings uh, when the model was trained. And so when you're feeding stuff into it, you want to have those drawings retain that quality. So here is the code for the last coding challenge was the RDP line simplification algorithm. And I'm just simplifying a sort of mathematical curve just to recreate uh, the animation that's on the Wikipedia page for the RDP algorithm. But I should be able to take these functions. I'm going to create another file called um, rdp.js. I'm going to reference it here in index.html. I'm going to grab my implementation of the RDP algorithm, which includes all four of these functions. You can watch the other video to see me write those functions. I'm going to paste them all here. And what I want to call is just RDP. So I give the RDP function an array of all, a whole bunch of points. Then I, I also give it an empty array that it's going to fill with the RDP reduced points the way I created the example was with a global variable called epsilon. So I'm just going to sort of hard code in a value for that at 10. Now, right before I generate the seed path, I need to perform RDP line simplification. Interestingly enough, the RDP algorithm doesn't know anything about sketch RNN and DX, DY, and Penn State. So actually, what I want to do is I want to have Another, another array called seed points. And I, those are what I actually want to collect. Oh, I, made, I, I made this kind of overcomplicated. It's OK. I'm going to comment this out. Uh, this is going to become important again. But I'm going to say seed points push uh, create vector mouse x, mouse y. And then the line that I want to draw is actually just mouse x, mouse y, p mouse x, p mouse y. So let's try this. this so the drawing still works. What I want to do is perform the uh, RDP line simplification now. So I can go back to my previous example once again and basically find exactly this code. So I'm going to grab this code, and I'm going to put it here. And what this is doing is it's creating a new empty array, and it's calling the RDP function uh, on the all points array, which is now called seed points, filling it with the simplified version of the line. And then what I need to do after that is now I have this RDP points, which is the simplified version of the line. I want to say for let i equal 0, i is less than RDP points, I'm going to actually start at 1, uh, rdp points.length, i++, plus plus, and I need to create the state now, right here. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to create the stroke path, which is rdp points index i, I dot x minus the previous one i minus 1, do the same thing for y, and then the pen is down. Then I can, I, I could redraw, I'm not going to redraw anything, just for a second. And then I want to put that into the stroke path and then call generate. All right, well, I, I, that was a little, I'm manic here, which I guess all my coding challenges are pretty manic. But what just happened? Again, the idea ultimately is for ML5 to handle this. I think that's what I would like to do. I'd like to create a helper function in ML5 that sketch RNN takes your seed path in and like performs the line simplification for you. But this is my coding challenge to implement it manually to see if it helps. So what I'm doing here is I have the set of points that I've collected in seed points. I call the RDP algorithm, which simplifies that path. Previous coding challenge goes through that in more detail. Then I have to generate the states based off the simplified path. And then that's what I put into the sketch RNN model. Not feeling super confident here, but let's give this a try. And it looks the same, but I think if, if I'm correct, 
if I did this many, many times, I would have better results. I think, however, it's very important that I create that same visual effect where I redraw the simplified line. And that's actually a pretty easy thing for me to do right here because what I can do is in Sketch RNN Start, after I do the line simplification, I can redraw the background. And then I can say begin shape. I, can, I should have been uh, end shape. And I'm going to say a four. Uh, let v of seed path, I'm just getting all the vectors out of the seed path, uh, vertex v.x, v.y, um, and uh, I'm going to say uh, no fill. I should have, I've already been drawing, so, but just to be consistent, let me take this here, put that here. So now I, I'm drawing and drawing and drawing, erasing it, and then drawing the simplified line. Let's see how that goes. Mm, it, I didn't see it. What did I do wrong here? Oh no, not the seed path. Seed points. And I should be doing this before, technically speaking, it doesn't really matter, but this is what I want to do here. So this is performing the line simplification. Drawing, and line isn't really right, but simplify path, path simplification. And then now, converting to sketch RNN states. All right, let's try this one more time. Let's see. Did, you, did that simplify? <laughs> it's hard to see. Let's try like a, a much higher epsilon, like 100. Yeah, oh yeah, it did. It's just not super obvious. Oh, no, 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 ah! <laughs> Oh, uh, coding, coding, whoops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> RDP points. Simplified line is in RDP points, not in the seed points. The seed points was everything I collected. The simplified one is called RDP points. My, I, I should use better naming. Now, I think, let me go back and change the epsilon back to 10, something more reasonable. And we're gonna try this one more time. I'm going to draw it slowly so that there's a lot of extra points. I'm going to make a like weird curve here. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. <laughs> so that looked like it really simplified it like way too much. So I this would be an interesting thing to tune because I want this to be in, uh, this will be like sort of a hard-coded value probably in ML5, although maybe it's a parameter the, the, the user of ML5 could adjust. But this is what I would want to sort of play with to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, but now I can really see the line simplification happening. Um, you know, what it should actually be, I have no idea. So as always with any of these coding challenges, I'm doing just a really sort of basic version. I think that I have mostly successfully recreated exactly this. But one of the things you'll notice is that um, there's a lot more thoughtfulness to the interface and the design. First of all, it's drawing over and over again. What, what Sketch RNN is drawing is a different color. There's a nice interface for picking which model you want to load. You can kind of like randomize uh, stuff and clear it. And there's a page of information all about how this works. So maybe you want to create your own version and think about what is that interaction design? How are you visualizing what the person is drawing versus what the model is drawing? And how are you picking which model to draw? Maybe you can make this into a game, um, an art project, something that is, does, tells a story, uh, that draws based on you know words that you know, text to speech or speech to text or something like that. There's so many ideas that I think you would explore. So I hope you make one of those ideas and share it with me by going to thecodingtrade.com and following the instructions about how to share your community contribution. But I will, before I go, just kind of give you a nice compilation. I think one of the things that I, uh, I want to return to is all the different uh, pre-trained models that are available. Now, you, you could also train your own model, which would be a really interesting thing to try. Very high degree of difficulty there, but possible. But the reason why I'm assuming there are models in here that are, in addition to frog, there's frog sofa, is because the frog model was trained with only drawings of frogs. The frog 
The SOFA model was trained with drawings of SOFA. The frog SOFA model was drawings of both without a distinction between the two. So the AI, the machine learning model, is just learning about paths that happen when you're drawing frogs and SOFAs. And so we could try crab, rabbit, face, pig, but I'm just gonna enjoy myself and try the everything model. Wait a second, I wanted to do it again and again. So <laughs> let's at least add that here as well. So if the state is end, instead of saying no loop, what I want to do is actually call sketch rnn.reset, which will reset the model, and then call sketch rnn start. So if I reset the model, call start again, it's going to draw a new version. No? Here's the mistake. When I'm, I'm resetting everything, I don't need to do all this again, but I might as well. <laughs> so I could refactor this. But um, at a minimum, what I need to do is, uh, actually, I don't need to do any of this because seed path is a global variable. So, but I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to reset seed path. So yes, I need to refactor this, but I, I don't want to add all the seed points to the seed path again. So let's try this. What will the model draw? Enjoy. <laughs> no, it's not working still. Oh, this, so this return is a problem. So I think I need next pen to not be end anymore. And uh, current stroke to null. Oh, oh! X and Y! X and Y! X and Y! X equal RDP points, um, the last one, right? X and Y need to just be wherever this leaves off. I think this is the last thing I forgot to reset which I didn't even set for the first time, x, y needs to like pick off where we left off. And I will say goodbye to you by letting you watch a compilation of sketch RNN drawn cat pigs. This is way too much fun.